Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you all. I think we're starting the webinar now. It's um, 4 01 in uh, Europe, in Switzerland, on my end. It's probably very late or very early in the morning on your end. So um, a heartfelt warm welcome to all of you dialing in from across the globe. It's a pleasure to have you all here. You're all interested in the LGT Impact Fellowship Program. So I really hope that I can give you a good overview of the fellowship program and of course also LGT Venture Philanthropy um, uh, on a more general note. Um, to make your time really worthwhile, we have two very special guests on the line today who are Lutho Bonambi. Lutho, are you here? I hope she will join. She's our guest speaker today, current fellow of the current cohort. And maybe let's start with the other um, special guest we have, Justin Arnhold. Hello, I see your face already. Welcome, welcome. And wonderful hey, to see you again. Well. I'm so excited. Hi, how, how are you? Hello, everybody. Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining. Thanks for making the time. Um, so Justin is a is a is a fellow of the 2019 um, cohort, and he will share with you a bit about his experience um, in a bit. So a few um, household items. Maybe one more one more check for Lutho. Are you on the line? Maybe she's facing technical issues. That's absolutely fine. I hope she will be with us afterwards. Um, so a few housekeeping items. Um, I'm planning the session to be one hour. Um, I'm thinking of doing 20 to 30 minutes of um, introduction to the fellowship in LGT Venture Philanthropy. We will have the guest speakers um, talking about their experience. And then I hope to leave at least 15 minutes towards the end of the session for your questions. Um, and that's why, if it's fine for you, I would love to keep the questions um, until the end of the session. Um, so please mark them down or write them into the chat and we'll go to, to your questions afterwards. Um, and then the second item is that we're recording the session. It will be made available. Um, um, to the public after the session. So if you do not want your face to be um, in the recording, uh, now is a good moment to turn off the camera. Otherwise, um, I hope you don't mind if, if, it get, if it gets published. Same for the questions. You can um, ask your questions um, live with video on and your voice, or you can type them into the chat. That's absolutely up to you. And with this, I would like to start my presentation. Um, so the, the agenda I mentioned that just now. And let's start with a quick introduction about LGT Venture Philanthropy and who we are. Um, LGT Group is the largest privately owned, 100% privately owned wealth and asset manager in the world. And the sole owner being the princely family of Liechtenstein. Liechtenstein is a country um, in the middle of Europe. And the sole ownership um, has uh, essentially two major advantages. One is that decisions can be made very efficiently within the organization. And the other one is that there is a lot of flexibility in terms of time horizon um, compared to other companies that um, have pressure to report to their shareholders, deliver to their shareholders, um, like many other private um, companies or private banks in particular. Um, um, and this in return means that LGT can really sustain a long-term view um, on their strategy. And having a long-term view um, um, of a long-term view in the strategy, um, of course, allows um, the Princely family to really focus on creating real value for its clients. Um, and it's also very important for them to do business in a sustainable way. So this idea of sustainability, doing business in a sustainable manner, giving back to society and um, also the environment is deeply, deeply ingrained in the in the values of the princely family. And this is really how they do business. And um, so you can see on the bottom of this slide and um, the, the whole sustainability aspect is really integrated 
throughout the organization. Um, on the private banking side, um, we, we develop sustainable investing products and solutions. Um, private bank also has a philanthropy advisory team that advises clients who have the desire um, to, to build their own philanthropy foundations or really want to make philanthropic um, investments. Then we have LGT Venture Philanthropy um, Foundation, which is the foundation um, I work at and which also organizes the LGT Impact Fellowship Program. I'll talk about it in more detail in a bit. And there's also Lightrock, um, which is the, the classic private equity arm um, of LGT Group. Very good. And with this, let's move on. So to give you a bit, oh, I would also appreciate if you could mute yourselves. That would be amazing. Thank you so much. Um, so, uh, yeah, to give you a bit of a history about LGT Venture Philanthropy, we were founded in 2007 um, with really the idea of the Princely family that they wanted um, to, to um, or they had the intention to deploy philanthropic capital um, and to support and drive scalable solutions that generate a positive impact in this world. And so back then in 2007, um, our teams were really spread across the globe um, with the idea to support entrepreneurs who had scalable solutions um, to some of the biggest problems and um, who were really hungry for growth um, and, um, and had proven models already. And we would support these entrepreneurs um, uh, financially. But very soon, the teams on the ground that were supporting these entrepreneurs um, realized that I'm sorry, I just need to check. Please mute yourselves, all of you. Thank you. Um, uh, so they realized quite quickly while working with these entrepreneurs that they, in order for them to really scale their businesses, they needed human capital. They needed talents on the ground to really support them in scaling their businesses. And this is basically how the LGT Impact Fellowship Program was founded in 2009. And the idea here was really to support these entrepreneurs by bringing in great talents often from the private sector, and support these entrepreneurs. Over the past um, years, the foundation has grown. We have, um, we have supported different organizations, different types of organizations, different sizes of organizations. But very soon, there was also a need to, um, to broaden our spectrum of what kind of organizations can we support, because our teams on the ground, they, they did not only see non-profit organizations, but also came across across fantastic for-profit companies that had very positive impact. But of course, as a foundation giving grants, we were not able to support these kind of businesses. And um, also in terms of financial instruments, we were quite limited and, and soon and there was a need to broaden also the spectrum of, of these instruments. And this is really why a separate brand was launched in 2016, which is today called Lightrock, um, the impact investment um, arm of LGT. Um, and so today we have two brands, LGT Venture Philanthropy. Um, we deploy grants to nonprofit organizations and Lightrock um, that uh, supports uh, for-profit companies um, through equity investments mainly. So much for a quick historic background of the past 15 years. About LGT Venture Philanthropy in more detail, we're an independent charitable foundation. And since inception, we have deployed $109 million. Um, and impacted with this 9 million lives. And our purpose is really to empower people um, facing disadvantages to improve their quality of life, contribute to healthy ecosystems, and build inclusive and prosperous communities. Um, we operate with uh, along a few key principles. Um, the first one is that we provide direct investments in form of grants mainly to high impact local organizations that have innovative solutions, have scalable models um, where strong management teams are in place and that have um, a strong focus also on data driven decision making. So these are the criteria for the organizations that we support. Thanks for your hand, I see it. Um, I will keep questions until the end of the session. Thank you. Sorry, our Ma'am. I just want to you that you are still on the agenda slide. That's what we're seeing. It Is that the case? 
Yes. Um, I see slide number six, I think, with we implement our purpose. That? Okay, it hasn't moved. Okay, I will just refresh. Maybe restart, I'm try to sign in again. Okay. Thank you. Um, our geographic focus is on Sub-Saharan Africa and India, and we have three core themes that we invest in uh, or we support organizations in, which is education, environment and health. And another key characteristic for our foundation, and I would really say it's a, it's, it's, um, it's a very unique um, characteristic for our foundation, is that we deploy flexible funding to our organizations um, with a strong focus on long-term engagements, with strategic business expertise and access to the Impact Fellowship pro program and networks. Um, but let me um, elaborate on this a bit more on the next slide. Um, a few more words about our approach um, in more detail. So as I mentioned, the long-term engagements, that means that we're not interested in providing grants to many organizations across uh, the globe um, for one year and then go out of the organization um, and that's it without accountability for, for our funding, basically. So we have a real interest in building long-term relationships, accompany our organizations, become strong partner for organizations um, and really um, uh, join them on their path and to scale their organizations. So we really aim for long-term um, engagements with the organizations. Um, moreover, um, it's very important for us that organizations are locally rooted, that they operate in the communities, they have a strong understanding of the communities that they serve, um, and at the same time, of course, we have local teams um, that similarly have the local context, have the local understanding, um, who are sourcing these organizations and building relationships with these organizations. So the lo local, um, local aspect is extremely important for us. Um, re with regards to the flexible funding that I mentioned, what we mean here is um, that it's multi-year, like I said, it's really tailored to the needs of the organization. Um, it's it's unrestricted, meaning it's not only um, to support certain programs of an organization, but we can really um, strengthen organizational backbones with that um, funding um, and really build capacity at the organizations um, through the fellowship program, for example. So our support goes beyond also um, purely financial support. Um, moreover, we are known to bring in strong business expertise um, to our organizations. Um, so we have um, in our approach and our methodology is is very um, is is very similar to the private equity approach. So we really have um, business experts who have um, also private sector backgrounds. Who our teams, many of them have worked in investment banking. They come from consulting firms, and they can really bring in that this business lens into organizations throughout the due diligence process, but also as strategic support um, throughout our engagements with the organizations. And of course, on top, the LGT Impact Fellows that we bring to our organizations, and they also um, bring in exactly that very crucial business um, expertise into the organizations. And finally, um, our idea is that we, um, we want to have a deep impact in a certain area, in a certain sector, which is why we, um, we foster complementary solutions, complementary organizations whose solutions are complementary, basically, um, in order to really um, understand and tackle a problem from several aspects. Um, and 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 also use synergies across portfolio organizations in order to have systemic change um, uh, and positively uh, impact systemic change. Good, that's it about our approach. Um, we are we have regional offices, like I said. We have a team that is based in um, Nairobi. We have another team that is based in Mumbai. Uh, our local investment teams. Um, uh, uh, are responsible for the portfolio in their region. Um, so you can see here um, our footprint in the world. Um, you see also a few organizations um, in other regions of this world. And, and that's really um, our legacy portfolio from, from the 15 years, of course, that, um, that we've been operating. And so, you know, the geographic reach of our foundation um, has also changed over the years. So today we we have in total um, supported 74 organizations 
um, and have reached 9 million people um, since inception of our organization. A few words on Lightrock. Um, like I said, they're the impact investing arm of LGT Group. They are a growth capital focused impact investor. They invest growth capital into businesses that have product market fit and scalability across um, across their core impact themes that are people, planet, and productivity. Um, and, and their geographic region is European, but also global. And um, to date, they have invested in more than 85 um, portfolio companies. And with this, I think let's make um, let's make it a bit more tangible. I would love to show you a quick video of one of our portfolio organizations so that you can get an idea of what kind of organizations we're supporting. I have tested the setup here before with one of my colleagues, Cecilia, who's maybe on the line. So please bear with me as we try this. One more try. Here we are. India has one of the highest maternal and child mortality and morbidity rates of the world. In the next one hour, four women will die in childbirth somewhere in India. And since India accounts for almost one-sixth of the world's population, unless India's maternal and child health indices improve, the world is going to suffer in the future. Why does a mother or child die in India or any country in the world? There's a three delay model that can explain that. These loss of lives are completely preventable. And one day it struck me. Mobile phone is ubiquitous in the country. Why couldn't I use the mobile phone to reach across to women with information when she needs it directly to her. And so I started Arman. Our first innovation was Mmitra, that's mobile friend. It's a free voice call service to reach across to women with critical information. For example, the fact that the women need to take iron tablets daily, what nutrition to have, immunization, how to take care of the child after the child is born. And this is scaled across nine states of the country quickly. And the government noticed the success. And they approached us in 2019 for implementation of their Kilkari program. Kilkari is a government scaled up voice call service similar to Mitra, and they were looking for a partner to extend healthcare throughout India. Health is a human right. My vision is no woman or child die for want of care. Let me share my presentation again. Thank you for your patience. So this was a short video of our portfolio organization, Arman, based in India. And, um, and like Dr. Aparna says in the video, health is a human right. And I always get very inspired with this video, with this organization that has had such an impressive impact, reaching millions of women, making sure they have healthy pregnancies, um, and 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 can um, can give birth to healthy children with such an easy intervention, basically through mobile phones. Like I said, we we are really looking for organizations that have a focus on technology, also using technology to reach and um, to increase their impact tremendously. 
And so if, if you get inspired by this video like I do, then definitely you're at the right spot here. Um, and you're definitely a good candidate for the fellowship program, um, which I would like to introduce you to now in more detail. So the LGT Impact Fellowship Program is an important part of the strategic support that we provide to our portfolio organizations um, of LGT Venture Philanthropy and Lightrock. We have a few roles also at Lightrock. And the main idea of the program is really to match high potential candidates and mid-level professionals with a strong business background. I think, sorry, I just get a message here in the chat. Has the presentation disappeared for everyone? I think more people would have complained by now, so <laughs> I keep going, um, assuming that most of you uh, see the presentation now. Um, otherwise, please raise your hand now. OK, thank you. <laughs> um, sorry, I, I, I'm by myself on this uh, webinar, so I need to also take a look at the at the chat. Thank you. Um, good. So the, the idea is really to, to place these high caliber talents um, and, and bring them to our portfolio organizations um, um, who are in, in, in need of, of great talents, as I mentioned before. And the idea is that fellows um, work on the ground with organizations for 12 months full time. It's a paid fellowship. Um, it's a full time engagement. We don't do part time programs. We don't do six month um, fellowship programs um, because this has I mean, the design of the program has has been tested over the years. We've been around for over a decade now, and this has really proven to be the most successful format of the program. So that candidates who get very responsible roles within the organizations can have enough time to familiarize with the organization, with the local context build the trust within the organizations that is so crucial to really have an impact at the organization and and really change something so the 12 months are important um for for candidates to to stay with the organizations um a few facts about the program since inception we've placed 190 fellows on average our candidates have six to seven years of work experience Around 36% of the fellows stay on after the fellowship program, meaning they either extend their engagement or they become permanent hires. And around 71 of the candidates stay in the impact space. So many of you might consider the fellowship as a stepping stone to um, transition your career from the private sector into the, into the social space, impact space. And I think this indicator is, is testament that many fellows, many candidates actually manage that transition through the fellowship program. The value proposition on our organizations for our organizations is that um, you know we have the reputation um, we've built a strong reputation um, over the last year so we really managed to attract high caliber talents and the organizations of course know that they can get these kind of talents through the fellowship program um, and therefore um, it is very attractive for them to to get this um, business expertise from the private sector have someone come in build capacity in the organization and transfer their knowledge and this has proven to be very successful and very attractive for organizations and moreover there there are always um, there are always constraints um, in terms of resources especially human resources um, and therefore, an extra pair of hands is always needed at these um, very, very important organizations. Moreover, we support our organizations in the entire recruitment process. So LGT Venture Philanthropy is the, the organizer of this program. We do the heavy lifting of the recruitment. We do the screening um, of, the, of the candidates, the applicants. We do the marketing communication of the program um, to really support our organizations the best we can. And as a result, we have several organizations that keep hiring fellows year after year after year, like Mothers to Mothers here as an example. And now what's in it for you, of course, and um, we have, I believe, a very strong value proposition also for the applicants to the program. Um, and the program has, has proven to be very valuable for, for candidates because it is a great opportunity to do meaningful work. Most of you here today, I hope, have the same motivation that you do want to um, do something um, purposeful with your career. And that's why you're looking into the fellowship and, and we can really um, guarantee responsible roles at the organizations where you can have an impact. Um, moreover, um, all the organizations where we place our fellows, they have the backing of LGT Venture Philanthropy, a very important financial institution, of course. Um, so as I told you also before, our due diligence um, process is very strict. 
So um, we can really ensure that you get placed into trusted organizations um, where we also um, uh, deploy our, fi our, our fin financial resources. Moreover, it's very valuable for you to gain a hands-on experience, especially if you're new to the sector. You will be working in the field, very close with the organizations, very often together with senior management. And so you're really exposed um, to, uh, to these organizations and the communities they serve. And it allows you to build a track record um, in, the, in the space. You will start building your network. Um, and, and the very basis of this network will be your fellow fellows um, whom you will meet during a one week kickoff workshop that takes place in Switzerland, where we bring in all the fellows um, to bond for one week and um, work on case studies. Um, and, and they will really serve as your support group throughout the fellowship year. Uh, I think I mentioned what happens after the fellowship program. Many, many candidates stay in the impact space. Many candidates use it as a, um, as a stepping stone uh, to transition their career. And we have also, um, we're very proud of our alumni network. So some of our candidates have really um, had impressive careers um, across a wide spectrum of impact-driven organizations. Um, to give you a, a few examples, uh, Xu Yin, who is today a partner at Patamar Capital, an early stage venture capital firm investing in Southeast Asia. Um, then we have uh, Graham Day, who became the CFO of a social organization. Um, Matt, who today is senior investment officer at USAID. So quite a few interesting candidates um, who really um, yeah, had impress impressive track records post-fellowship. About the requirements to join the fellowship program, um, so you will have to have at least a bachelor's degree, though two thirds of our candidates have at least a master's or an MBA degree. The minimum requirement is two years of full time work experience, excluding internships, um, but on average, um, our candidates have slightly more experience, like I mentioned, six to seven years on average. Um, with regards to soft skills, um, all our candidates are highly impacted by um, highly impacted, highly motivated by impact, um, and really have a strong desire to to do meaningful work. And um, they're all globally minded, have very good cultural sensitivity, um, and and I think one of the key success factors of candidates who uh, do an outstanding job during their fellowship are people who can deal with ambiguity. Um, these organizations are um, uh, work in very dynamic environments. Things change, and um, and so people, fellows who can handle this change and can go with the flow and really come in with that mindset of I want to support the organization no matter how I can be of help. I think they will be more successful than someone who comes in and says I was hired as a financial analyst and I only do financial analysis. So definitely this this um, flexibility um, will, will be a big advantage for, for candidates. Um, some of the backgrounds that um, our, our fellows um, have when they join, um, I think all of the typical business functions are, 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 are in need. Um, finance, accounting, HR, marketing, communications, project managers, um, this year, we also need people in HR, data analytics, data science, uh, more and more. Um, also, a, a big um, a big function that is high in demand. Um, yes, let's come almost to the end here. Um, a few words about the um, recruitment process. Um, so the applications have opened on 27th of February and they will close on 2nd of April. That's um, another two and a half weeks to go. Um, the fellowship team will then screen all the applications that come in and we will provide a short list of candidates to the organizations. The organizations will then screen the shortlist and will select the candidates they would like to invite for interviews. And LGTVP, the fellowship team, will make then the introduction with the, the organizations and the candidates. Um, and from there, um, interviews will be organized directly um, between the organization and the fellow. Um, this is expected to happen around April. Um, I would expect um, uh, invitations for interviews towards end of April, early May. Interviews will take place throughout May. 
Um, and then hopefully all the contracts will be signed in June so that fellows can then start their assignments around July, August, September, depending on the need of the organization and also depending on your availability. You might have um, you might have um, a notice period at your current employer or you might have to apply for a visa. Um, so all of this will, will be taken into consideration. Um, and so we're quite flexible with the exact starting date. But the kickoff workshop will take place in Switzerland in August, mid-August this year. Um, so that's it about the timeline. And that's the end of my presentation. And with this, I would like to hand over to L our first guest, Luto. Um, I know you had some technical issues. Are you with us now? Hi, hi, Maria. Oh, amazing. <laughs> Hello, Luto. So good to see you. Hi, thank hi, you so Maria. so much for taking the time. So as I said, Luto is a is a current fellow actually. She's um she's working for Harambe South Africa. But I'll let you do the introduction. Um and yeah, if we could keep it to five minutes, five to ten minutes max, that would be fantastic. So over Amazing. to you, Luto. Amazing. Thank you so much, Miriam. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm so excited to be here, and I'm like I'm so excited. For you guys, actually, like I can imagine, I can remember back when um, in March last year when we were doing the same uh, thing and you know, just getting all this information, just like the beginning of an incredible journey. So um, as Miriam said throughout her presentation, if you are a person who is um, excited or, you know, passionate about making an impact um, in some way or another through your career, um, whether it's going to be a transition or whether it's something you've already been doing or studied for, this is really the right um, the right place for you. So yeah, um, a little bit about me. So I'm Lutombo Nambi. I am um, a South African. I'm uh, based in South Africa and it so happens that the portfolio organization that I've been placed with um, is also in, in South Africa. It's a Harambe Youth Employment Accelerator. Um, just a bit about my background. Uh, I come from a small town in the uh, Eastern Cape. I studied um, development economics. Uh, my first job was in um, and a, a, a consultant in the development economics uh, space and a company called Genesis Analytics. Um, and thereafter, I um, started my own business. I went into entrepreneurship. Um, and then from there, that's when I transitioned into um, the, the fellowship role. <clears throat> and um, yeah, so what I've been a little bit about Harambe. So Harambe is a, a a unlocker of employment opportunities for uh, young people. So the youth unemployment rate in South Africa is 60, 66.5%, which is incredibly high. So um, what we do is uh, unlock um, opportunities, earning opportunities, whether it's uh, formal employment jobs or um, entrepreneurship opportunities and um, the entrepreneurship wing is relatively new and so that's where I've been uh, placed. So I came into Harambe as a special projects associate, um, uh, specifically in the Make Your Own Money uh, team and um, there my role has really uh, been around strategy development um, because as I said this wing is a, is a new wing and um, also research but as Miriam says um, throughout for fellowship journey, um, it so happens that perhaps your your role kind of evolves as the need arise. And if you have that attitude that you know I'm 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 here to serve, I'm here to help, I'm here to uh, bring capacity and use my skills um, in the best way um, possible, then you're you're able to kind of uh, move with it and transition with it. So now it's taken on um, a, a business development kind of role. So. Um, seeing which partners would be great to work with, um, seeing uh, what opportunities to, to, to take advantage of in the entrepreneurship development space and what uh, support we can bring to, to, to young people. So that's um, more around what I've been doing most recently. Um, and yeah, I think that's that. Um, one of uh, the exciting projects I've been working on is a project called uh, Uli, 
Um, and Squealy is a digital app that allows, it's basically a, a an informal shop or we call them spaza shops in South Africa, um, in your pocket. So it is an app where young people can download it and they become uh, sales agents and they make commissions uh, off all of the sales that uh, they make. And it's been a real... Uh, journey and inspiring to watch all these people um, make real sales and um, improve their livelihoods through through the uh, their earning opportunities um, and so it hasn't only been about the earnings um, we've been providing them with mentorship support business mentorship support uh, marketing materials and people have um, really taken it on so um, yeah it's, it's it's been incredibly exciting to to kind of be at um, the development of, of, of this project and, and program. Uh, another project that is at its nascent stages is a um, is a policy pilot uh, program that Harambe is uh, working with, with the World Bank um, and NYDA, which is the National Development Youth Agency in South Africa. Um, and this pilot is looking at um, reducing uh, licensing barriers. So in some industries uh, in South Africa, you need, um, informal traders need all these licenses and red tape and all of that. So we are creating a pilot to see what would happen to young people or business uh, or trade or informal traders if uh, we remove all those barriers and um, uh, by creating a zero uh, licensing pilot, so it's at this, it's at the beginning stages. We're conceptualizing it, so it's great to have you know all these uh, brilliant minds on it. I mean, some of the people that we're working with on on this project are the people you know we read the policy papers. Um, they 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 they're really the forerunners and forethinkers in this kind of space. So it's been an incredible learning experience for me and being also able to contribute and know that my um opinion is is um or viewpoint is kind of valued in this in this kind of space um in creating a project of this nature um has been really exciting. So um yeah that's just a snippet of what we've been uh uh, doing so yeah i think miriam i don't know uh, is that is that okay cool this yeah. is absolutely perfect thank you so so much for making the time and joining today luto and yeah i can just um testify on my end when we were doing the recruitment that you know it was so amazing to receive such a such a fantastic application from luto who had this amazing mix of experience between the research and the consulting experience and her own entrepreneurship experience finding this perfect match um, within Harambe working on micro enterprise and you can really bring in all your knowledge um, from both worlds so it's a really fantastic match and really really happy to have to have you in the cohort and now I'd like to introduce you also to Justin uh, another amazing fellow um, of the 2019 cohort and you know I just forgot to introduce myself actually at the beginning of the of the presentation I go I was so keen on jumping into the topic and telling you all about the fellowship program and, and the LGT Venture Philanthropy that I forgot to say that I'm the fellowship manager. My name is Miriam and I was a fellow myself in the same cohort with um, Justin in 2019. And so it's a special pleasure for me to have you here today, Justin, and it's so amazing to see you again. And um, Justin was one of our very senior fellows. Um, and so I'm super um, excited to hear about your experience, Justin. Yeah, super. Thanks so much, Miriam. Um, and Luto, thanks so much. It's a pleasure to meet a fellow South African, although I'm on the other side of the world. So it's amazing how we all come together in, these, in, in, this, in, in this incredible environment. Um, and, and, a, and a huge welcome to everybody who, who's on the call today. Um, you know, as a starting point, uh, you really are um, looking to partner with the most incredible organization, um, as in LGTVP. Um, my my background is 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 hospitality and ecotourism. Um, it's a it's it's a thirty year background. So I was one of the one of the slightly older fellows in 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 the cohort, um, and was very fortunate to do a, a, a senior fellowship and extended fellowship period. Um, so hospitality, hotels, um, ecotourism developments um, in the Seychelles, South Africa, Tanzania, and uh, I was 
really at a stage in my career um, some years back where I felt that I'd done five years with a certain organization um, and had made a really good career you know, path with them. However, I felt that I was missing something in, 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 in my, my personal and, and, and in my professional workspace and, and happened upon the, the LGT um, uh, fellowship program. Um, very fortunate to go through the processes and, uh, and was uh, successful um, and, and joined um, LGT VP. Um, my role uh, was based out of, um, uh, out of Kenya, out of Nairobi and the Maasai Mara. And the partner organization was um, an outfit called Basecamp Explorer Kenya. Um, they are one of the leading uh, community conservation uh, organizations in Kenya um, and are one of the strongest drivers in regards to um, embracing community and cultural and heritage practices um, and aligning that with uh, conservation and in uh, commercial modeling with regards to safari um, uh, initiatives. Um, so my role was was strategic development. I worked directly with the CEO um, uh, Jerry Mutisua in Nairobi and um, and the chairman um, Swen. Um, and really, where it comes from is is, is taking an approach that, um, as 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 Miriam has mentioned and 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 Ruto has mentioned, is it's about finding how and where you can actually create positive impact for the organisation and in turn directly affect um, their various projects and their initiatives. Um, it's the most amazing platform to be involved in because you really have to take a step back in the way that you approach these roles uh, and this fellowship. Um, it's not about um, the top-down approach, the seniority. It's about what can you do to support these organizations, look to, to find where, where their red flags uh, areas are in their businesses, and see how best you can model strategy um, and put mechanisms in place um, and support those um, organizations so they can grow effectively. With, with, with conservation um, community projects, uh, obviously it's getting um, a very much um, strong partnerships with the community, with the, with the community leaders, with the local community. It's about employing locally, it's about sourcing locally, and ultimately it's about the conservation of the land. Um, and a lot of what we did was build conservancy um, models uh, and conservancy areas in order to grow the um, wildlife migration corridors uh, in order to enhance the continued um, uh, growth um, and retention of, of these, this amazing wildlife um, environment. And, and with these models, what came out of it obviously was if we are successful in this modeling and successful with community engagement, um, as us not owning the land, we lease the land from, from the owners uh, from the landowners and then employed them uh, obviously with us in, in all the safari camps. Um, we had this opportunity uh, to create impact all the way through um, the various levels of society. So from uh, employment, arts and crafts, heritage, culture, uh, and into the safari guides. Um, so so across, across, across the board. Um, my uh, fellowship came to an end and I was asked to stay on. Uh, I stayed on for another year consulting to Basecamp Explorer Kenya. And um, the main project I focused on there was the development and opening of the educational tourism arm and the development of a brand new wildlife training college, which was set up to train local safari guides, um, set up a hotel management diploma program, um, uh, pastoral management, um, and a, um, an educational tourism uh, model wherein we're bringing visiting researchers and professors, um, university um, uh, students from around the world who could then spend time um, in this environment and learn more about uh, this great work that Basecamp and, and their various partners are, are carrying out. Uh, the, 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 there's two elements to, to, to really where the impact lay um, is, is, is where I was impacted personally was the first workshop in Switzerland where we all came together from around the world for, for we were there for five days. Um, and the highs of that uh, experience were just extraordinary. Um, you know, surrounded by a group of people who are dynamic, professional, incredible skill sets, open, humble, and they all had an approach as how could we go into the world uh, with our skill sets and with our experience and, and, and create positive impact and, and, and facilitate and, and support um, and these organizations. 
And then looking back towards, you know, the, the end of my period with, with, with Basecamp and with LGT, um, it really has transformed my approach to, to the way that I do business, um, the way that I consult to various organizations now, um, and to the type of modeling that we actually put in place. I just recently finished a consult actually in Mexico where I put together the strategy and development for four new ecotourism ventures. Um, and took to a lot of the modeling that we're using in Kenya into a completely new environment. So I would suggest that um, you let your excitement just bubble over, um, go in there with a really open approach, go in there with a learning approach, um, with humility, um, and, and it'll be extraordinary how, how it will change you as an individual, but also recognizing that you're helping to change communities, environments, cultures, and societies um, in environments and areas which are which are quite sensitive, in a sense of um, that they have huge risks and challenges that they face on a daily basis, and uh, and if you can have the opportunity to do that, then you're on a on fantastic track ahead. So I hope that covers um, a bit about myself and where 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 I've come from and and what the fellowship meant to 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 the organisation I work with and certainly um, to myself personally. And happy to take any questions. So thank you. Thank you so, so much, Justin. It was almost like a, a, a little time journey hearing you speak <laughs> about your experience. I remember, you know, discussing or hearing your updates in the quarterly update calls that we do every quarter with, with the fellows. Um, um, and so, yeah, it's just wonderful to, to hear that again. Um, and also, you know, great, great example of, of someone very senior coming in. So, so I would say the requirements in terms of backgrounds, um, experiences, senioritys, and geography, it's, it's all very flexible. It's, it's a very diverse group of people that, that comes together. Um, but it was, it's a coincidence that both of you are from South Africa because actually there was a, 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 U, um, a lady from the U.S. that wanted to join, but she canceled last minute. So I was texting in the, in the in the 2019 cohort WhatsApp group yesterday, like please someone um, spontaneously up to join the, the the webinar. So I was very happy um, that Justin jumped in so spontaneously. Um, speaking of flexibility, so <laughs> he's really walking the talk. <laughs> Good, That's and awesome. I think with this, let's move to questions. Um, because I promised you enough time for questions. Um, so let's see. Um, May volunteer work in social impact sector be included? Absolutely, volunteer work. If you did that full time, um, and um, and and it was um, yeah, if it was full time after studies, um, that's absolutely um, valid. Um, which countries in Latin America do you have partner organizations working with? So LGT Venture Philanthropy does, doesn't have um, partner organizations any longer in Latin America. We had on the map, as you remember, um, some organizations that are still in our legacy portfolio, but currently we don't have any active organizations any longer and that we actively support with fellows. However, we have um, opportunities at light rock companies this year. And we have opportunities in Mexico, Mexico City, at an organization called Salauno in the health sector and, and eye care. And, um, and also an organization called Dr. Consulta that is based in Sao Paulo in Brazil that offers fellowship roles. So please do check them out. Um, is it only restricted to a minimum degree graduate and with minimum of two years work experience? Yes, these are the minimum um, requirements. Um, um, I think the reasons for that is that, um, first of all, we receive too many applications, so, so we need um, to have um, certain criteria in place. And secondly, candidates, um, all the, the fellowship roles that we offer um, are really tailored towards this kind of profile. Um, so we do, um, the, the roles are all tar targeted at mid-level um, professionals because candidates are expected to come into the organization, take on responsible roles. Um, I know I, I would love to offer also internships, um, summer MBA projects, um, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, but this is the focus of this program, how we um, manage to support our organizations in the best way to really build capacity. So these are the requirements for the program. Um, now give space for questions, please. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm just reading the comments here. Good. 
Um, okay, question to Luto and Justin. Which three soft skills were most important to you to find your way into the organization and motivate people that change can be positive? Uh, Luta, I can I can give the floor to you and follow on um, if you wish. Sure, happy happy to go ahead. Um, I think uh, I think the first is um, teamwork for 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 me. Um, at Harambe, they actually have a value called um, better together, and it's around business building positive relationships with um, your organization. And Harambe is one of those organizations that lives out their values. So it's not just like something that's hanging on the wall. Um, so for me, coming into to the organization was um, to really uh, listen to what uh, the need uh, was, to work with the team, uh, to understand the organizational setting. Because sometimes we come in and we have all these ideas and they might be great ideas, but first it's, it's, it's really good to just settle in into the role, uh, understand your teammates, understand the context in which you're operating in, and then work um, the people in your team to uh, kind of uh, build and uh, co-create uh, solutions to whatever uh, um, challenge or, or uh, problem that you're trying to solve. So working together um, was like was key, I'd say. Um, the second is um, creativity. Um, you know, some I, I think sometimes being an outsider um, or uh, coming into an organization, um, you have kind of a different lens, a, a fresh pair of eyes. And um, um, Harami was quite open to, um, you know, sharing that platform and allowing uh, uh, a new lens, my lens, to kind of uh, inform or shape some of uh, the projects or pilots that we were working in. So, yeah, being creative in... Um, in solutioning and um, working, working together. So uh, I think I have two. Those are the main ones. I don't know if I have a third one. I have to think about it. So Justin, you can go ahead. <laughs> okay, super. Yeah, it's funny how that mirrors as well. So for 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 me to add on to and to support Luta on 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 her response, um, very much uh, um, uh, taking a very open approach to 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 the cultural integrity of the country that you're going to be based in. Um, uh, understanding how, how organizations operate um, and understanding also, um, you know, what expectations are put in place. Um, so a sense of certainly a sense of empathy, a sense of humility um, and recognizing that, um, you know, listening, listening and communication were, were, were always key um, and, and taking a, an approach when required um, to lead um, various uh, projects or various developments. And, and recognizing that you, you're actually there to support the organization and you're actually there to, to do some of the heavy lifting for them when they don't have the capacity. Um, and then sharing that strategy and those solutions and putting them into play um, so that they are in a position where, where they can then live those out once your fellowship has, has, has come to an end. And that's that's where the impact sits is that you you can measure it and then you can actually exit and you know that that's going to be sustained um, and those those strategies are sustainable so 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 and then very much supporting luto as well is is, is creativity and lateral thought processes um you know in particular working in remote areas and and, and different environments um you one was constantly thinking left right center up down backwards forwards um and 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 uh, you know if you had one plan you had five plans um, and one of them was going to fly. So um, I think, I hope that answers the question as well. Thank you so much. Both of you beautifully said. Um, next question. Um, how does LGT define lives impacted? Um, that's uh, that's the people that um, that our organizations reach. So the the people reached with the services and the products they they offer to to the communities they serve. Um, 109 million 24 organizations. Does that mean that uh, on average an organization re receives 4.5 million? 
Um, no, that's not exactly the case. So um, um, in total, I mean, that's a total amount that we've invested in um, since inception. So that's since 2007. And since inception, we have supported um, more than 70 organizations. Um, 24 is our current portfolio. Um, and then also um, the, um, I mean, the, the ticket size has changed over time, of course, and the duration of, um, of our partnerships have, have evolved over time. Like I said, we started in 2007 and, and over the past 15 years, our strategy has become more focused. Um, and, uh, and so we cannot just say a, an average um, that each organization um, received 4.5 million. Um, so it's it's very diverse and really depends also um, on you know where we're on the on the time horizon where we're talking. Today we're really um, looking to support organizations um, long term. So there's follow on investment rounds um, that we support, and and on average I would probably say um, the ticket size lies per year around 300 to 500 thousand, um, and then multi year of course. Good. Um, Okay, that's just a comment. That's good. Thank you so much. Thanks for all your positive comments. Wonderful to hear that you enjoyed the session. Um, question from Ella. When we're assigned to work with a community, will the flight cost be covered? How about accommodation? Okay, I will speed up a bit with the questions because we're running out of time. Um, so the fellowship pays a living stipend that covers um, local accommodation, food, local transportation. On top of the living stipend, um, there's a return ticket um, to the destination of your fellowship and um, also health insurance is covered for you um, by your organization and the cost for the kickoff workshop are fully covered as well. Irina, is there a full list of all partner organizations? Absolutely, on our website. How are partner organizations able to apply? Um, we don't accept any unsolic uh, unsolicited um, proposals. Um, so our investment teams are out in the regions and reach out to organizations and they have a pipeline that, um, that they're looking into. Is there age limit to join the LGT fellowship? Absolutely not. Actually, in the cohort of Justin and myself, we also had a lady who was already retired, bringing in her um, very, very specialist skills. Um, into an environment organization. So no, there's no limit. Um, quick question to Justin. I've been direct beneficiary of the community-based tourism and conservation as I'm a member of Lemek and Mara North Conservancy. What is the future of ecotourism in Kenya, Masai Mara with all the impeding challenges like fencing, climate change, etc. This is a very big question, and <laughs> it will probably um, require a more elaborate um, answer. So yeah. let me see if there's a few more um, practical questions um, that need to get answered, and then we move to that um, question. Any aversion to prospective fellows with like 15 years experience? No, absolutely not. And um, we've had the wonderful example of Justin, who's had um, around 30 years of experience. What are the next steps and where can the application form be found? Um, you can find the application but button on our um, website, on social media. We've been communicating very, very heavily on social media. So please find it there. I will also send out an email to all participants of this webinar summarizing all information. Will the interview be done online? Um, if you're not in the country, most likely, uh, yes, online. Um, good. Here, the application that we file is regarded for organizations for both LGT Venture Philanthropy and LightRock. That's correct. Um, that's correct. And uh, and you will find um, the details in the job description. I'm a mid-level professional, very much interested to apply for the fellowship, but I'm married and have a son. Can they follow? Um, we do not, the fellowship does not support um, for to bring along your families. Unfortunately, we we um, we want to give the opportunity to as many candidates as possible to join the fellowship program. So we cannot cover for family costs. However, if you are uh, willing to um, to cover the costs yourself, you can, of course, um, um, transfer your family as well. Two small questions here. Is the program restricted to candidates who have business entrepreneurship background? Uh, yeah, excellent question. Thanks so much. Um, on average, um, many people come from the private sector, but it's not restricted 
um, to people with that background. If you come from the social sector, you are very welcome. If you come from the public sector, you're very welcome. And um, please take a look at the job description, what the requirements are. If you meet the requirements, you're most welcome to apply. How many fellows do you accept in a year? Um, the average cohort, cohort size is probably 10 to 15. Last year we've had 18, so it varies, but that's roughly the, the number. Um, hey, does this mean that they start before July? Um, um, it, it depends if, if the organization says ASAP, um, then, then that might be before July. Um, but as I said, it really depends on the availability of the candidate and also of the urgency um, with the organization. Um, if you tell them that you're still in, uh, I don't know, doing an MBA program and can only start in July, um, you will need to discuss that with your organization. Uh, if you have several years of professional experience, say 15, and you have constraints in moving to a country, but not to travel for short periods, perhaps because you have family, could you be posted in a country you reside? And the requirements are stated in the jobs, uh, in the job descriptions of each fellowship role. And um, we have a few roles that would allow remote um, working. However, most roles will require you to work on the ground with the organization. OK, can an undergraduate with two years experience be eligible? Um, undergraduate is bachelor's degree, is that correct? I'm not an English native speaker, but I believe a bachelor's degree is an undergraduate. So yes, bachelor's degree is a min minimum. Thank you so much, Adrian. Um, bachelor's degree is undergraduate degree is a minimum requirement. You can apply. When are the fellows expected to start their fellowship? Um, between June, July, August, September, depending on your availability, depending on the need of the organization. Flexible. Um, thank you for the presentation. Good. OK, we're done with the questions. I see a raised hand um, and we're over time already. I'm terribly sorry if you need to jump off. That's fine. Um, but I will still try to answer all questions. Um, good. I have a question from Eve. You have a raised hand. Would you like to speak up? Oh. Hello. Thank Eve. you, Miriam. Do you catch me very well? Yes, if I can hear you. What's your yeah. question, please? Th thank you, thank you. I'm curious to know how uh, you select partners because uh, my question is about the venture philanthropy. It is not actually about the fellowship. I've yeah. understood all the requirements, but I'm curious to know how you select your partners because I saw that you are in education, environment and health. Yeah, that's, thank you. Mm. That's correct. Thank you so much for your question, Eve. Um, um, so the criteria that we have is um, that the organization should have strong management team in place, that they have um, they have a strong focus on data driven decision making, and so um, also focus on on adopting technology to to scale impact. Mm -hmm. And they all have scalable solutions, and they have all proven models. I think these are some of the minimum requirements. Um, and please do read the details on our website. Um, I hope that's good for a first um, answer. And like I said, we don't take um, unsolicited proposals, um, but you can read more on our website. Yeah, thank good. You. OK, I think that's it for the questions. Um, I am a bit over time, so I think we should close the call here. Um, I would like to tell you that I'm sending you a follow up email with the presentation as well as the link to the application portal. Um, you can read up more information on our website and on the talent portal. Also, there is a Q&A section where there are a lot of answers to many more questions. There's also a live um, chat document. If you have any questions that you would like to still ask, you can um, type them in this document. I look into this document regularly and answer your questions. Um, and apart from that, thank you very, very much for joining. Thank, thank you especially to our special guests today, um, Luto and Justin. It was wonderful to have you. Thanks for sharing your experience. And I'm really looking forward to your applications. 
thanks a lot for joining and wish you a wonderful afternoon, wonderful evening or day, wherever you are on the globe. <laughs> Good. Thank you, Marian. Thank, Thank you. All. Thanks. Cheers, all guys. Thank you. All the best. Bye, Thank everyone. You. Thank you. Bye-bye.